So here's the deal. First, my closet was a portal to hell. <laughs> it's a bus full of me. I managed to close that, but it just opened up to a Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria. You need to get out. You need to get me some pizza. Then, I kid you not, it was Minecraft. Just straight Minecraft. It was awesome. Until the creeper blew up in my face. Well, how do you do, neighbor? Oh no. Which leads to now where I open the closet and this. I don't know what to do with this. I am at my wits end. I need your help. Please, please, please help me out here. I just wanted to play some Fall Guys. and welcome to another episode of that cyber channel i'm dan cyber and i'm the game salmon well the saga of my closet bringing me everything that is pain and misery continues this time there's a uh yeah good 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 good, good enough you're actually looking at a stuffed dog named boofy boofy from Boofy's Bunker by Micro Horror arcade you literally called me over here to talk about these games right Shh. Micro Horror Arcade has made some of my favorite indie horror games in recent history. All of them have a healthy mixture of horror and comedy, and all the characters in these games are unique and totally fantastic. I recently sat down and binged almost his entire catalog of games. So today I thought we'd talk about one of the most underrated horror developers out there. Plus his games won't put too much of a dent in your wallet which is terrible and you need a new one. Add time! Ridge wallets, they're great. Get 10% off today by going to ridge.com slash cybert and use code cybert at checkout. I know you heard this for the last three videos, but they were again kind enough to continue their support of the channel. So let me continue to say how great these freaking wallets are. Each wallet is insanely durable with a lifetime guarantee. They have RFID blocking built in. So even if you're surrounded by hacker ninjas, your information is completely safe and you're always surrounded by hacker ninjas. I've been using this wallet for months now, and it's my favorite wallet I own. And with a wide variety of colors, you can get the perfect wallet to match your style. So head to the link in the description and pick one up. Now, let's get to the history and ignore the ninja hackers. And add! Let's take a moment to talk about Micro Horror Arcade. Micro Horror Arcade started working on games back in 2018. Dan. His first game was released in October of 2019. Dan. What? I'm trying to do the history. Well, you're actually skipping a pretty big part. Micro Horror Arcade actually got his start on YouTube as Jayski Bean, with his first video dating back to 2016. He primarily did Let's Plays of horror games. It wouldn't be until he covered Baldi's Basics in April of 2018 that his channel saw a big boost. Later that year, he decided to make a change and left his YouTube channel to pursue game development. Well, more like a hiatus because it didn't take long for him to get back to posting less than a year later. Since releasing Boofy's Bunker on October 2019, he's been putting Scott Coffin to shame by creating six more games in six months. Yeah, you thought Scott had a reputation of releasing games quickly. Micro Horror Arcade did a game a month and actually gave release dates. Great, now I'm reminded that Security Breach is going to smack me in the face some random day soon. Even Scott's release dates are jump scares. There's no doubt that Micro Horror is an absolute creative beast. Juggling both a YouTube channel and full game development is no easy task. Heck, I can uh, barely upload once a month, let alone do my day job. But I'm sure all of you have one question on your mind. Are these games any good? Well, that's what we're gonna find out today. Or at least that's what Dan wrote in this script. I sure did, buddy. Let's not delay anymore and take a look at what Micro Horror Arcade has to offer. Jerrica, hit the button! Welcome to the Micro Horror Arcade Collection. The first game on our journey is Big Face Marsh. Fun fact, it's about this big face. Only the most profound statements here on that cyber channel. Big Face Marsh is all based on a Markiplier video titled Bigfoot with Jacksepticeye. Can you imagine if there was a monster <laughs> called Big Face? That's a creepy <laughs> boss, right? That's huge, like 20 foot face looming from behind a tree. I really hope that someone makes a creepy pasta. 
called Big Face. Two weeks later, Micro Horror had put together this walking serving platter with legs. The setup to this game is pretty simple. You lost a bet to me, specifically. Ha! I can't believe you lost the bet! All you had to do was praise Lord Helix. Well, you know the deal. You either have to stay here in this swamp all night, or come back with proof of Bigfoot. Hold up. Your friend didn't praise Lord Helix, so you sent him into the swamp with only a phone during a rainstorm? Sure did. Lord Helix must be praised. Right, Dan? Uh... Say it, Dan. I don't want to say it. Say it! No! Say so it! You praise Lord Helix! Yes! <laughs> Your first task is to find shelter, which is a short walk forward, so, of course, I went every other direction first. Once you find shelter, though, you'll be attacked by the one and only Big Face, launching you into the game. As it was set up with the phone call, your goal is to record evidence of Big Face. Seems easy enough, but man, are there tons of obstacles in this, from animals who have footsteps sounding just like Big Face himself, to just straight bear traps. Trust me when I say, you will end up in at least two to three traps. They're randomly placed and hard to see in tall grass. This game is really easy to overthink. When you see Big Face, your first instinct is to stealth around to get a shot of him. But you quickly learn that won't work when you get Big Faced. You got Big Faced! I struggled for a while to try to get away from him until I, you know, actually did the task given to me. Shocker, play the game and you can actually win the game. From there, it's all about staying on your toes. Once he charges at you, turn on that camera and record the evidence. There are actually three different endings to the game depending on certain conditions. The first being, collect enough evidence. The other two, well, you'll just have to play the game yourself. Or click that i card and you'll see right now. Subscribe and watch my playthrough. Hey, you said I could plug my channel whenever. Jerrica, get him out of here. Wait, no, subscribe here too. Wait, no, the plug. Hey, when you're on YouTube, you gotta play the game, no matter the cost. Beyond the games you'll find on Itch.io, link to his games in the description, Micro Horror also has a few Patreon-exclusive games. One is a Slenderman-type game with a killer pickle, and another called The Florgan, which is insanely hard. One game I really wanted to focus on is Oh No, It's Mom. I mean, with a title like that, of course we're going to talk about it. Oh No, It's Mom was created off a bet Jay made during a game of TKO in Jackbox 5. The game takes heavy inspiration from the old Windows Maze screensavers. Real quick, show of hands, who here is old enough to have a computer with this on it? You know you probably had a computer with it on there too. Well, I mean, yeah, but it's just important to remind everyone about your YouTuber boomerness. Jerrica put you up to this. Yeah, sorry man. Your objective is to collect three wandering keys and unlock their respective locks. After picking up your first key, mom will spawn it's mom. and begin chasing you around the maze. Yup, that's a mom. To somebody, I guess. Well, since she doesn't spawn right away, it's a good idea to get a handle on the maze before collecting keys. It'll be important since after you collect or unlock two more items, father spawns. And father, well, he's significantly more terrifying. This came is rough. The mazes are really tight, just like the old Windows maps. One wrong turn will land you in a dead end where you can't escape. I know it's a meme here for me to be bad at the games, but believe me when I say this game is a struggle. I think the best I could do was one objective short of being able to beat the game. Wait, you mean you beat the first level? Wait, first level? Oh yeah, there are like four maps in a hard mode you have to beat. And you did all that? Well... Find the exit, find the exit. Oh, where's the exit? No, no, no. <laughs> Shut up, Jerrica. Let's get back to the Itch.io page and tackle the Micro Horror Arcade Trilogy. Launching alongside fellow low poly developer, Dave Microwave Games, this trilogy includes three short and difficult horror games. Our first game in the bunch is, wait, I can't be reading this right. You sure are. This is a horror game. More of an endurance test. Okay, well. Let's talk about Escape the Poo Poo House. Jerrica, please get every fart you can on standby for every time we say poo poo. As you would expect from the title, this game is about being trapped in a poo poo house that you need to escape. 
The premise alone screams made for YouTubers, and I kind of love it for that. When it comes to gameplay though, Escape the Poo Poo House is no joke. You'll be needing to find keys in each room to unlock new rooms, all the while dodging a bunch of poo poo. As you clear poo poo doors, you'll need to keep a sharp eye for pipes, which are your only means of escaping the poo poo house. Now, while that alone doesn't sound too difficult on paper, it doesn't factor in the poo poo you'll need to avoid. Spread throughout the poo poo maze, you'll find toilets littered about. These toilets are spawn points for the keys, but also all of the poo poo. If you walk near a toilet, one to three poo poos will spawn and randomly wander about. If you're really unlucky, you'll spawn the green poo poo, which will chase you throughout the maze. It's all about keeping constant movement to dodge the poo poo and avoid toilets at all costs. You will occasionally find flush levers, which will clear out all the poo poo, but make sure to use it wisely. Once you're lucky enough to find the right pipe, you'll finally escape the poo poo house, never to return. Unless you want to play hard mode. <sighs> yes, by beating the game and by clicking further, you can play a harder version with less poo-poos, but they are way faster and chase you down. It's tricky, but very possible. So Jerrica, how many poo-poos did mm -hmm. we say? Perfect. Let's move on to the next game in the trilogy, Dangle Dongle Farm. In this game, you play as a freshly reanimated undead monster named Andy. Yep, it's right there in the description. Matter of fact, you always play as an Andy in the micro horror trilogy games. Just a just a fun side note. Your objective is to escape the farm by collecting the necessary items to unlock the exit and start your escape vehicle. And if you're wondering, yes, a corn maze is very much involved. It wouldn't be a horror farm if there wasn't one. This is definitely the longest game in the trilogy. It requires navigating the previously mentioned corn maze multiple times to find every tool and key you need to beat the game. Fortunately, by the third, or, you know, maybe your fifth time around, you'll find a tool to cut down the travel time. But of course, it just wouldn't be a good horror game if you didn't have something chasing you. As you run back and forth through the maze, you'll need to do your best to avoid the titular dangle and dongle. They're not alone, though, as you'll need to avoid this flying pig who steals your keys, and what I assume is a scarecrow that just... And jump scares you. When it comes to Dangle and Dongle, though, each of them functions a little differently. The purple eyed Dongle is farsighted. Uh, you mean Dangle? What? No, Dongle, the one with the purple eyes. That's Dangle. Oh, then Dangle is farsighted. No, nearsighted. Dongle? Dangle. That's what I said. Dangle is farsighted. He's nearsighted. Abbott and Costello must be rolling in their graves right now. Are you all too young to know who's on first? Go look it up on YouTube. I swear to God, the best sketch of all time. This game can be really rough if you don't know what you're doing. Fortunately, you do get two chances to escape. If the farmers catch you, you'll be locked up in a barn. It's easy to escape, but mess up one more time and it's over. Which is more infuriating when you realize you have to start at the beginning. All your progress, wiped. That really only becomes a problem because there's so much to do and traveling takes a long time. If you're up for the challenge, Dangle Dongle is a test of endurance. There's a lot to fetch and a lot of chances to mess up. If you can push through though, you can unlock four different endings. One ending does include more poo-poo. Now it's time to talk about the absolute bane of my entire existence. Lanky Lanky, the stupid squiggly snake squid pile of poo-poo. While Dingle Dongle Farm is tough because it's so long, Lanky Lanky is the Dark Souls... <sighs> Why would you make me say this? C come on, just read the three-year-old meme. <sighs> Lanky Lanky is the Dark Souls of Micro Horror Arcade. See, that wasn't too rough, buddy. Update your jokes, buddy. <laughs> Ow. Well... It's not necessarily wrong. This game is incredibly unforgiving. One wrong move and you've basically done yourself in. In Lanky Lanky, you play as a temp who has to, um... Alright, so I'm gonna need you to go to the, uh, storage basement floor um, in our office what? building. What? And get a few I... things from the Do... office. We need some supplies. Do... inventory? I think? I got a piece of paper here with a checklist of things to get, like, Souls of the Unborn. What the heck are we playing? Once again, in this game, you'll need to collect certain objects in order to defeat Lanky Lanky. The only issue, every object looks exactly the same. Instead, you'll need to carefully listen to each box to identify what it is. There's a bit of a learning curve, but definitely doable after, I don't know, 
10 tries. If you end up grabbing the wrong one, Lanky Lonky will speed up, making it more difficult to escape if he sees you. Fun fact, to get the secret ending, you have to at least pick one item wrong. We haven't talked about too much of the scares in these games, mostly because they really only happen if you mess up. Lanky Lonky is definitely one of the scarier games in this video. It did get me a few times. Specifically, I hate this hallway. Lanky Lonky is hard, and I hate him. And yet you can find him everywhere in the micro horror universe, but we'll get to that soon enough. Now let's leave and never talk about this again. Lanky Lonky's here. <laughs> Lanky Lonky, is the salmon here? You just missed him. That's okay. I'll just wait here for him. Please don't. Micro Horror Arcade was quick to find a place in the game developer community. One developer that collaborates with him from time to time is Dave Microwave Games, who we mentioned before. Both known for their low poly aesthetic, it wouldn't take long until they released a collaboration effort. That game was Slendy something. No, I didn't forget the title of the game. It's literally called Slendy Something dot dot dot. Slendy Something is a fantastic game with mechanics very similar to the Slenderman games, as you would expect. However, what I love so much about this game is the charm and sheer amount of extras. Slendy Something is divided into nine different stages with nine different Slendies. These range from classic character characters like Slenderman and Creepy Nuns, to SpongeBob and Shrek, to Golden Boob Man. What? I'm not gonna do the bit again. I've evolved past. It's a when it comes to gameplay, it's Slenderman. Find the eight pages and win the game. While the gameplay is incredibly similar to Slenderman, it shakes things up with the various maps you play on. Each Slendy has a themed level with different layouts and obstacles. And tons and tons of Easter eggs from both Micro Horror Arcade and Dave Microwave Games. Slendy Something is definitely one of the easier games that Micro Horror has worked on. The mechanics are quick to pick up and the game feels well balanced when it comes to each stage. Not to mention there's a lot to unlock here, so be sure to explore every map thoroughly to find everything, including... Oh no. That's the guy in my closet! Sure is! Now it's time to talk about... Welcome everyone to Boofy's Bunker. Easily one of the biggest indie horror games, not to mention Micro Horror's first ever game. I love this game. Spoilers, sorry, spoiler alert for the next two minutes. Boofy's Bunker was originally going to be called Boofy's Hedge Maze, but once development was on its way, it quickly became something else. Don't worry, the hedge maze is still in there. And I hate it so much. Yeah, it's a bit of a time, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. Booting up the game, you'll find four different modes right off the bat, with the first being what can be considered the main game. Boofy's Bunker is really the beginning of the micro-horror universe. It's filled dense with lore about the Chaos Realm, and really sets up the base foundation for most of the future games. Except maybe Big Face and, oh no, it's Mom. Boofy's Bunker has multiple levels inside. You have the standard bunker, where you must avoid Boofy, the back rooms, where you outrun, uh, Mirror? I guess? I never exactly figured out what that is. Up next is the arcade, which pits you up against 3D animated pixel monsters, the previously mentioned hedge maze, which nearly got our entire stream motion sick. Are you sure we can't just 95% it and say it we 100%ed it? <laughs> 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 if this is making people sick, I'll, I'll do this one off stream. That's totally fine. Finally, we have the kitchen, where you get chased by a burger and a giant chef Boofy. Oh, also the burger farts. You also have some various special modes like Elaine's memoir, which is like an epilogue, plus two holiday updates for both Christmas and Valentine's Day. Ooh, gotta love those wee wees. Also, there's Doofy's Dunker and Lanky's Bunker, and it's just so much content. I have 14 episodes on this game on my channel, and I still have more to do. This game is name your own price? What the heck? All right, besides the sheer amount of content in this game, how does it play? 
fantastically, which is impressive for a first game. It does follow the horror trope of finding objects to escape each room, but each objective functions differently. While you can only hold one key and unlock one slow-moving door in the bunker, the kitchen allows you to pick up multiple tools you'll need to pry open the door. Each level has various difficulties ranging from easy to extreme. There's also an impossible mode for the bunker. I've never had my spirit so thoroughly crushed. If you want to just enjoy the surface level of the game, you can handle easy through hard on all the levels fairly well. But then there is extreme mode. Extreme mode is not messing around, dude. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh, son of a- This is the worst. The game's difficulty does have a great progression though. Each difficulty level progressively introduces new obstacles without overwhelming you like say 90% of FNAF fan games. Truth. But once you get to extreme, you'll learn quick if you're going to 100% this or not. But let me tell you, getting through the extreme modes are incredibly worth it. Once you're done, you open up even more content! A true final chapter where you must complete every level, and a custom stage builder called Chaos Mode! If you want to talk about incredible game design, Chaos Mode manages to mix any monster in any map, so you can create challenges for friends that could have Boofy inside of the arcade, all the while being pestered by this guy telling you there is so much to this game! I've been having a great time streaming it, and we're gunning for 100%. It hasn't been easy. Okay! But seeing how much there is to unlock is insane! I'm a very dedicated person when it comes to game completion, particularly with those games I enjoy. Boofy's Bunker was an absolute joy to 100%. All those struggles, all those attempts! It was all worth it in the end. Earning a spot in Boofy's Hall of Fame was a nice reward as well. If there's any game you should play from this video, it's this. It's well worth the price. Pick it up and enter the Chaos Realm with us. Join us. Join us in the Chaos Realm. Boofy's Bunker. Join us. Join us. Join us. Join us. Join us. Micro Horror Arcade hasn't been around long, but in his short time developing, he has created some amazing games. If you're a developer coming from a YouTuber background, you truly understand what it takes to make a great game for both YouTubers and gamers alike. I don't think anyone embodies that more than Micro Horror. Jayski Bean recently uploaded a vlog talking about how he's not sure what he wants to do next whether he wants to continue pursuing a lot of game development or bring back the YouTube side of things. If he's watching this, I really hope you continue developing games. You have serious talent when it comes to it. And take your time, find a game idea that really gets to you, something that is uniquely you, because I can promise you, it's going to be great. Jayski Bean, AKA Micro Horror Arcade, is an absolute legend. I've been a fan of his for over two years, ever since I first started coming across his videos, and I love his games. I think I've made that very, very clear. Despite my rage on some of his games, I love the game development, I love the combination of horror and comedy, and I love the unique character design, and you know, I, I'm excited for whatever he comes out with next. I really am. Well, we covered all the games, so now let's see what other new horror awaits me in my closet. Whew. Dude, it's fixed. It's a normal closet. Great. Uh, can we go play some Fall Guys now? Though, I don't remember putting a microwave in here. Did you say microwave? Dan, close the door now. Thank you all so much for watching. A huge thanks to the Game Salmon for joining me on this adventure. You can subscribe to him right there on screen. A special thanks to Elizabeth Crazy and Jerrica for helping me through this. And a shout out to Elizabeth Mello and all my Patreon patrons. Dave Microwave Games is coming up next, so make sure you hit that bell to know when that video is going up. And until next time, Cybernow.